Hello everyone, I've got another video for y'all. A while back, a neighbor of mine was kind enough to give me this small dresser. It's a Recollections dresser made by Dixie. I think it was made in the 1980s. It's in pretty good condition overall, except it has this broken handle here. The top is a little scuffed, but I'm not going to be staining this one. My plans were to paint it black and then just go from there. The first thing I did was remove the handles and take the drawers out. Since the handle's broken, I'm going to be replacing it with some other handles, but the hole measurements don't match, so I'm going to fill in the old holes with some Bondo. To use Bondo, you mix a little bit of the putty and cream hardener, to then immediately place it where you need it. It starts to firm up really quick. It's typically ready to sand in about 30 minutes. I prefer to use Bondo over wood filler in these cases because it cures faster than wood filler. While the Bondo dries, the next step is to clean this dresser so there's no dirt and grime. I'm going to be using Super Clean and Toasty is going to be helping me. You just spray Super Clean on your sponge or rag, wipe down your project, and it's ready for sanding. To give my paint a better surface to adhere to, I scuffed up the surface with my sander and 180 grit sandpaper. For the areas that were chipping, I just sanded a little bit harder and feathered it all out. Once I was done with the larger areas, I used a small piece of 180 grit sandpaper to get into all the grooves. At this point, the Bondo on the drawers were dry, so I sanded all of that down. Once I was done sanding, I wiped everything down and put it up on paint cans so it would be easier to get to when I'm painting. The paint I'm going to be using for this project is Valspar Signature's Dark Kettle Black in a satin finish and I'm going to be spraying it out of this Wagner home decor sprayer. This sprayer is different from the Graco that I typically use because it's less powerful and the paint tends to splatter a little bit more rather than coming out in a mist. So I practiced on the cardboard for a little bit until I felt comfortable with it. It's really great to practice your technique on cardboard before you attempt to do it on furniture. Even after all that practice, I still had problems with the spray pattern. I also felt like it was splattering too much and creating this orange peel effect. So before it had a chance to dry, I sprayed it down with water, wiped it all off, and after all this frustration, I decided I was just gonna do it with a paintbrush. But by the time I got to the second coat, I had had some time to think things over and decide I was gonna practice a little bit more. You can see here on my paint booth walls where I practiced and practiced and practiced. Here's where I first sprayed it and it was splattering on the sides. I adjusted the sprayer, cleaned out the nozzle, and added one ounce of water to the paint so that it would spray more smoothly. After a few more practice tests, you can see here where I got the spray pattern to be even and more of a mist rather than splattering out so much. It still splatters a little bit, but not so thick that it ruins the paint job. This sprayer is always going to have that little splatter effect, but the way to reduce it is to make sure that whatever you're spraying is thin enough, you have the airflow settings right, and that you keep the spray nozzle cleaned out at all times. You may even need to clean the nozzle out between coats. After I figured all this out, I was able to get a nice finish. You can see when it dries, it looks really smooth. While I was working on this piece, it was pretty cold. It was 55 degrees Fahrenheit and almost 100% humidity. That along with me spraying my coat a little too thick caused some runs to happen here. I'm gonna use some mineral spirits on a rag to delete this and repaint it. You could use sandpaper to sand any runs or drips that you get unless you wait for it to fully dry, which could be about 24 hours. You risk having the paint peel if you sand it too soon. After I'd fixed the drip, I kind of liked the distressed look that I got, so I repeated the same technique on the edges to see how it looked. Once I got the majority of the front done and was about to work on the drawers, I realized that it was just going to be too much, so I sprayed my last coat of paint and moved on.
Next, I used a tape measure to measure the holes that I needed to drill for the new handles. It'd probably be better to do this before you start painting so you don't risk ruining your paint job by doing it afterwards. Next, I found some of this rethunk junk resin metals in a pewter tone, and I figured if I layered a few coats over the top using a dry brushing method that it would give a pretty cool effect. Dry brushing is a really simple technique. You just dip your brush in the paint and then wipe the majority of it off. Then using long, light strokes, brush the surface back and forth in several layers until you get the look you desire. I like to do the first few coats while holding my brush vertically. Then for one coat, I'll turn the brush horizontally to apply some markings that are a bit more bold. Then I'll come back with another coat with the brush turned the other way and blend it all in. All of this just gives the finish a little bit more depth. Because the paint is being applied very lightly, it dries very quick between coats. So you're pretty much able to do this technique without any dry times. To top coat this project, I'm using this Parks Pro water-based polyurethane. To apply it, I'm using one of my toasty sponges. I know the other one was very dirty, but this is a new one. I wet down the sponge a little bit, then apply the first coat in a thin layer, then a second coat in a thicker layer. Keeping the sponge damp with some water as you're applying it allows you to work the polyurethane a little bit better. I ended up applying three coats of this polyurethane allowing it to dry about 30 minutes in between each coat. After it was dry, I was very happy with the results. All I had left to do now was install the new hardware. I had went to Lowe's before starting this project to look for handles and I found these for 59 cents. You can see similar handles are about five bucks a piece. So I went ahead and grabbed a bunch. After I installed the handles, this project was complete. Not everything went as planned with this project, but in the end, I was very happy with how this furniture turned out. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do and hit the bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see y'all again soon.